Hey everyone, what's up? This is Simon back with a new tutorial. This time a bit more advanced topic using RxJS to create something to intercept our HTTP calls because if you implement an app, especially perhaps in the enterprise context, you will have a lot of HTTP calls like 40, 50, hundreds and you can't always implement the alert logic or the retry logic for just every call in there. So it makes sense to have HTTP interceptors that basically intercept every call and perform something in the background so you can focus on writing the app and making the calls and you're always sure that they are handled correctly. So that's what we're gonna do today. I've created already an Ionic application to get started and I just made a few changes. So I added the HTTP client module to our app module and I implemented a fake HTTP service that makes a few requests to a backend that I will show you as well in a second. So um, these are just standard HTTP calls. We will see what's behind all of these different routes. And then within the home page, I just injected our service and again implemented the functionalities to call the service and in some cases show a toast. But that's really not the um, core part or the idea of this tutorial. So therefore, I just created this upfront and again, just a handful of buttons. So right now, these buttons, some of them will deliver a result as we can see in the lock and we also see a toast, but a lot of them will simply fail. And if you have these calls in your application, you would have to write an alert controller and show the alert for all of these failed requests. Some of them would actually work. So this one always returns something in uh, on the third call. So just a little uh, something here. And this final one is just uh, an unauthorized call without a token. So all of this is using a simple Nest.js API. I've hosted this on Heroku. If you're using or if you're a member of the Ionic Academy, you can also access this one. It's in the code link below this video. So basically the first call will just uh, return some data. The second call will return a failure always. The third one will, as I said, only return data on the third call. So uh, very stupid logic in here, but that's just for our demonstration. And finally, another one that um, shows a bit how a token refresh logic could work. So if you supply a token in the query params here, you will get data and otherwise you will get an unauthorized warning. So we can implement something in our app to handle this unauthorized 401 message. And finally, this one will just give us a token back um, as an idea of an endpoint. So. Um, here we go, we got the home page and we can actually leave most of these places and focus only on one thing and that's creating an HTTP interceptor. So I will create a new folder, interceptors, perhaps you have multiple interceptors in your application, that can definitely happen as well. And in here we will create a new file and let's call this one HTTP loading interceptor. TS. Right now uh, you can't add this with the Angular CLI. I saw a GitHub issue, but they said the community should create some schematics around this. So we will just for now create this one manually. So therefore we have to type uh, our own injector, but that's not a big problem. So export class and let's call this HTTP request interceptor and this one implements the HTTP interceptor. That's the basic idea around here. Uh, yeah, I'm not yet uh, implementing that interface, but that's not a problem. So we got a constructor that we will also need in uh, or at a later point. And then the important function that you have to implement is intercept. And we wanna intercept the request which is an HTTP request of the type any. So that's just the standard model for the interceptor and next HTTP handler. So now we got everything in place and this one should actually return an observable of the type HTTP event and again 
any. So let's see if I can close the brackets in the right order. Yes, please import this. Um, yeah, of course, I'm not yet returning anything. So in order to make this work, I could simply return empty and then the handler would be fine. To use our HTTP interceptor, we have to um, open our app module and go to the providers array. And in here, just like we using a custom route strategy in here from Ionic, we can now provide for the HTTP interceptors, there we go, importing from the same package like the module, um, our very own class, that is the HTTP uh, request interceptor and call multi true. So now for every HTTP request that happens in our application, our own interceptor will be called and we can do whatever we want. I think you already see the, the possibilities that an interceptor brings. One thing we're not really talking about in here is implementing your own JSON web token flow. So there are packages for this as well, but you could also easily do this yourself. Simply whenever an HTTP request comes in right here, you intercept it, you grab the JSON web token from the storage or you save it somewhere in the service if you already got it and then simply attach the token to the request and then let the request happen. So that's really the core of an interceptor. But now we want to focus on uh, what happens if the request fails, how we can retry it, and also how we could implement a token refresh, refresh flow. So first of all, in our interceptor, um, we're going to use a loading to show a loading because that's also something you always have to implement in all these places and it's really a task that uh, you don't want to do all the time. So let's inject the loading controller and then we can or we could show the loading immediately but i will be a bit careful here so i will first of all get the top and if we already have a uh, loading so has already a loading in that case we don't need to show it but if we don't have a loading yet we can go ahead and create a loading let me bring in this snippet quickly so simply creating a new loading controller with our spinner or options you want to have and present it. All right, so that's the first step. Of course, in the end, we should also make sure that we dismiss it. But for now, let's continue. In order to process the HTTP request, uh, we're gonna return our next function. So if you call next handle, it will basically return an observable again. And that's what the interceptor expects. So in here, um, handling our own request, we can add a pipe block and do all kinds of operations on our observable. So first of all, let's go ahead with retry when. Can I get some code completion today? Uh, no, why? why should I? I'm actually in the same project and deleted code and I still don't get the code completion. I am, I really don't know why this happens all the time. So import retry when from rxjs operators. Hopefully you will find the other imports, my friend. Okay, retry when expects to, um, or expects that we return an observable again and also defines what happens if an error occurs. So what we want to do is when we encounter an error, let's say usually we want to retry it about three times uh, automatically in the background with a little delay because you don't want to fire off three requests immediately. If it goes wrong for a reason, um, then we could also intercept that. But let's just assume in general, we wanted to do it three times. Um, the problem is that if we use something uh, with a delay, so that was uh, the first idea I had in general here um, to return uh, the error.pipe and then have a little delay of about a second and then just call take three. If you do it like this, the request would be called three times again. But in the end, if there's still an error, um, you wouldn't catch that error. Perhaps we can try it like that, but I don't have the 
code anymore open. So um, can we perhaps do a little tap in here and lock it out? So retry. That might work as well. Uh, let's see. Let's try our get retry failed because that one is the most interesting here. So perhaps we see one request failed, then we got a retry, we do it again, and now it works, and now I'm completely out of sync <laughs> because um, I messed up with my numbers. So let me restart my API to, to get this fixed again. Okay. So what we see is the request was actually retried two times, and then it was a success. Um, if my server is hopefully back up in a second, I can do it in the regular way again. Um, let's do it. Um, we can just do the request that fails all the time. So if you do the request that fails all the time, we will retry it for about three times now, as you can see with a little delay. So um, there we got the three requests. And in the end, we don't really get any error back. Uh, we can't really handle this anymore. So that is really a problem of this approach. And therefore, I came back to um, Stack Overflow answer that I found. And the idea in general is to basically handle your own retry count in here, in the retry when. So we can first of all get rid of this and then return our pipe block and now manually handle this. So just like before, we're doing a delay of one second before we retry the call, then we will uh, tap into the result or tap into whatever we got at that point, uh, simply to show a little retry toast, because I think a lot of this happens in the background. And to show this, I came up with a little retry count toast, I would say. So make sure that you also import the toast controller now, private toast controller. And then for every retry that happens, we will show our retry um, toast. And of course, that's not all because we also wanna map our result. So you can uh, map the data. You've perhaps used this in the past to extract values from a JSON response. But in here, we want to check if the um, entries, no, retries, I, I have a little, little typo in my brain, I think. So if uh, we increase the retries and that's already three, then we want to handle it differently. Normally, we will just return the error once again. So uh, this means another error happened and we're going to retry it again. But if we hit the end and still gonna error, we're gonna actually throw the error. And the difference here is that this will allow us to add to our pipe block another catch error block that will be triggered. So that is a big difference right here. Um, I can actually comment this out so we can see it. Uh, in the error case, we wanna also now present an alert again. Let's do a little helper function with an alert controller getting a message. Nothing fancy, but you just have to implement this in this one place and get uh, alerts for every HTTP request happening in your application. So private alert controller, alert controller. And then maybe we also want to uh, lock this error. Uh, and then call our uh, present failed alert. Passing the error message, I actually made sure that it's included as a message in the error response. So of course, this depends on your uh, API implementation. Now, what happens is that um, catch error also should return an observable. So in that case, we can fall back to empty, which is basically an uh, empty observable that then completes our stream of events. Now, let's try again. As I said, get failed will always return an error. And now we will call it three times again. Retry one, retry two. Okay, we're not really counting correctly. But then in the end, you see that this happens on and on. And I think, yeah, simply because we have no check in here and we're not increasing retries. Very good, Simon, commenting this one out. 
Um, that's also a way to handle errors. Just do an infinite loop of retries, but I wouldn't recommend this. So retry one of two, two of three, oh, sweet Jesus, three of three, and then four of three. We're not ending this retry. So if we now hit our if statement with this throw error, once we hit entries three, you will see the difference. We're doing it again. We're doing it one time, we're doing it two times, we're perhaps also doing it three times, and then we see error, we see an alert, but we're right now not dismissing our loading. To implement this, we can simply expand our pipe block, so you can really chain everything you get in here, and we can use finalize, which will be called once the observable is finished, so in here, we can dismiss our alert controller and I will grab the logic from here once again, just to make sure that there is actually a loading and then call this the loading controller dismiss. So basically the same checking if we have a loading in place and then dismissing it. So now we can retry it for three times we can still pass the error in the end if it still occurs to our catch error block and within that block now dismiss the loading so retry three oops you failed the text i got back from the api and then we're good now what happens if actually the retry uh, succeeds is that we also do the retry just like we did before retry and then retrying again, but finally success on third call. Again, the finalize block is called for uh, ending it and we can dismiss our loading and the data is passed through to our page. So now we already have a quite powerful retry mechanism in place, which means we will retry how uh, often we want. You can of course change this, you could change the delay as well, but now, Let's say you make a request somewhere and you get back a 401, meaning you're unauthorized, your token perhaps expired. In that case, you wanna immediately um, catch this error. So I will add another catch error actually before our retry logic. And within that catch error block, I will mute this. Uh, within that catch error block, we will now check if the error um, error is um, an instance of instance of HTTP error response and if that's the case we want to um, switch this so I will just implement this for uh, one specific case and let me bring this in before I make any typos that I will uh, regret and let's can I just yeah, the problem is that once you add a block like this, it expects an observable and marks everything else as red. So if for whatever reason, the first, uh, if fails, we can uh, return throw error with the actual error that should yeah mute already um, the highlighting. And now we can switch our little status in here in case it's a 401, we can handle it. And in the other case, we will just uh, default Back to the same behavior like here. So in the 401 case it just means our token is expired so let's add a new function in which we make another call to get perhaps a new token and then assign that token to the previous request. So even if the user was unauthorized um, we can do this in the background uh, without the user actually noticing that we refresh the token. So. Um, let's call this one private handle 401 error and then this one will again get a request HTTP request not interceptor so just the values that our other function already has as well we will pass this through this one as well and then next is the HTTP handler okay um, let's do a little lock should refresh token and then we can check or we can return this dot um, of course we need to make a request now 
So back to our constructor and injecting the servers. Private fake HTTP fake HTTP service. Um, returning this start fake HTTP um, get token, and you will of course have also a route for this in place to get your token, and then perform some operation in here. It doesn't really matter right now. And now this function can simply be used right in here. So this start handle 401, we need a request and uh, we need the next one. And then this function is happy again, since catch error again needs to return an observable. So we return our own observable. Um, yeah, I think we just haven't implemented it right now. So uh, let's go here. <laughs> um, in general, this now really depends on your application, but as an idea for what you could do, uh, once you get back the result for the token, you could call switch map, which basically switches to another observable. So in switch map result, and our result now um, has the token since this is my, oops, that is not my API. Where's my API? Uh, has somebody seen my API? I don't know where it is, but it actually returns a token. So we will lock this out. And you could, for example, store the token now. Um, but what's more important is to actually grab the token, which is in my response at this position, and then attach this token to the initial request. So request equals request clone. We can simply clone the initial request and then set a param. I will, in my example, add it as a query param. So in most cases for JSON Web Token authentication, um, it is, of course, in the header field for the authorization, but that's also something you could set right in this place. And then just like we did before, return next, please handle our request. And then this function is happy. And hopefully if we did everything correctly, this one is now happy as well. The code, if you look at this, the, the full code, it's really kind of complicated and really advanced RxJS stuff. But if you go through this one, uh, one by one, everything makes sense. The catch error blocks, the retry blocks, um, the switch map to a new observable, everything really comes together and makes sense in the end uh, if you go through it one by one. So let's try our request. First of all, get success just to show uh, we can get the success, we can show uh, toast if it completes, and we have the loading indicator while the request happens. Get failed will simply fail about three times, uh, retrying every one second, and once we're there, we will get the final alert that something went wrong with the API. Now get retry failed, as before, still works as advertised. It will complete on the third try, there we go. And now get authentication failed is interesting since we should refresh our token. We're in switch map, we're getting the token. And then finally our function uh, completes with the data of the initial call. So homepage, can I go to the homepage to show you? Um, there we go. This would be just like a regular HTTP call and the token has expired then the interceptor notices that the token is expired. So we get a 401 back in the error response. We will handle it by making a new request, getting a new token, saving it locally, attaching it to the request and then handling the request once again. And then we will be back at the top caller basically here. Retry when is really not really necessary since uh, the request now completes. We don't have catch error. We have a finalized block to dismiss the loading and everything happens in the background automatically. So I hope you enjoyed this a bit more advanced topic about RxJS and HTTP interceptors. If you got any questions, as always, please leave them below. Uh, if you want to see anything else in place uh, or in a video like a real token refresh flow or a JSON web token or whatever it might be, just let me know. 
make sure that you also subscribe to this channel for all the regular videos, tutorials, what is coming in here. And of course, check out the Ionic Academy, which is my online school to help you with everything Ionic. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will catch you next time. So happy coding, Simon.